Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. Catwoman and Jed Clampett seem like an unlikely crime-solving duo. Yet for eight seasons, Lee Merriweather and Buddy Ebsen teamed up as father and daughter detectives on the TV series Barnaby Jones. The charming, good-natured sleuths stood in contrast to the normally gritty, bare-knuckle detectives of the 1970s. You see, they used their intellect and Barnaby's ahead-of-its-time crime laboratory to figure out who done it. This premise proved to be quite popular as the series ran from 1973 to 1980. The show was the product of TV ace Quinn Martin, the man behind smash dramas such as The Fugitive, The FBI, The Invaders, and The Streets of San Francisco, along with Cannon. The series was meant to be a spinoff from Cannon. That was the original plan for the Barnaby Jones pilot as an episode of Cannon. It maintained a long-running relationship with its Quinn Martin-made sibling. William Conrad's Cannon character appeared in the first episode of the show, and the two shows crossed paths in an episode called The Deadly Conspiracy in 1975. Let's take just a second to point out the unparalleled output of Quinn Martin. At various points in the 60s and 70s, Martin would simultaneously have as many as four series running on various networks. Few creators have ever been so prolific and successful as this guy. Buddy Ebsen was 64 when he kicked off the series. And this veteran actor had a very long commute from his valley home to the set each day. Many of the cast and crew members remember this star's frequent cat naps. Ebsen would fall asleep in his car, fall asleep standing up. Given the chance, he would doze. Anytime the set was quieter and there wasn't much going on, he would get a little rest. But he always seemed to know when it was time to shoot. He would automatically wake up and be ready to film the next scene. It's pretty amazing that Richard Nixon was a really big fan of the show. The former president of the U.S. actually wanted to join the fan club honoring this television sleuth. Epson ended up running into him in Palm Springs, where the president geeked out and professed that he had seen every episode and could quote lines from the series. After this happened, Epson ended up writing the fan club president telling them to make him a member. But there's no documentation on whether this actually happened or not. The set for this series had a really relaxed, inviting atmosphere, by all accounts, and was basically a bit of a family affair. There were several children of the cast and crew that appear on the show. Bonnie Ebsen, the daughter of Buddy, appeared on the series. Lee Merriweather's daughter, Kyle, who later became a model on The Price is Right, also popped into the show, as did Quinn Martin's daughter, Jill Martin. It's also interesting that William Shatner and Robert Reed played villains on the series. Barnaby Jones proved to be a great forum for familiar faces to break from normal expectations. The bad guys included Star Trek Captain as a man who fakes his death, and the Brady Bunch father, who plays a journalist who will literally kill for a scoop. You'll also find Meredith Baxter Burney playing a serial killer in the show. Now, it might seem strange that there was a Beverly Hillbillies crossover that was planned with Buddy Epson playing both Jed and Barnaby. The proposed plot remains a mystery but Jones would likely have come to the rescue of Clampett. This never came about and never got put into the works for various reasons. Though this crossover never came to fruition, the two worlds would meet in 1993 
when Ebsen's character makes a cameo in the big screen remake of the Beverly Hillbillies that starred Jim Varney playing Jed. At the beginning of the sixth season, Buddy Ebsen was growing weary and tired of his role, and he asked for it to be reduced. He had gotten older, and he needed to slow down a bit. Episodes were then divided between both Lee Merriweather and Mark Shera, each being the center of the attention, with Ebsen's involvement dropped to slightly more than episodic cameos. Throughout the run of the show, Buddy Ebsen is the only actor to appear in every episode of the series. Lee Merriweather appeared in almost every episode of the series, with the exception of one. A copycat show called Griff from 1973, featuring Lauren Green as the title character, hit the small screen. But unlike Barnaby Jones, this was unsuccessful, and you probably don't even remember the name at all. It was canceled in mid-season. Lee Merriweather was a delight to see on this show each week. She's known to us, classic TV fans, for her exciting role of playing Catwoman in the 1966 Batman movie. But in the 70s, she turned her attention of acting alongside some of classic TV's favorite leading men, like this show and also the new Andy Griffith show. But before all of that, in the 1950s, she felt that she had no acting skills at all, despite appearing on TV as early as 1954. She did all her acting back then strictly on gut instinct and not training. After winning the Miss America crown in 1955, young Leanne Merriweather, as she was known then, took her scholarship money straight to the actor's studio. There she planned to study acting and extend her skills to pursue more work on screen. The very next year, rumors started to fly everywhere when the nationally known columnist Walter Winchell reported in mid-1956 that Meriwether would wed ex-Yankee slugger Joe DiMaggio, who at the time was not long divorced from Marilyn Monroe. Meriwether denied these rumors and said that she wasn't engaged to DiMaggio, insisting that they were only friends. It went on to be known that Walter Winchell had completely made up all these claims just to catch a story. Meanwhile, Meriwether's acting classes paid off as she soon appeared in those iconic roles and we eventually got the pleasure of enjoying her each week on this show. Take a look back at this grand show from Quinn Martin. It's a good one. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.